Yo, it's your favorite SS class criminal, Ragna the Blood Edge. I'm here with Jin and Saya, and today we're going to be ranking all the core Yu-Gi-Oh sets from the Duel Monsters era. What a surprise this is, brother. Before you called me, I had no idea you played enough Yu-Gi-Oh to do something like this. It seems I still have much to learn about you. Question. Why was it you called me here and not Noelle? I would have thought you'd be far more keen on doing something such as this with her. Yeah, I hit up Noelle, but it turns out she's never actually played the game, so... Oh, forget that woman, brother. She'd rather collect her Pokemon cards than bother trying to learn how to actually play a card game. Let's just do it without her. I am sure you meant that to be a jab at her, but I believe you may have actually struck the truth. Yeah, yeah, I got it. So, naturally, we're gonna start at the start. So what are we thinking about Legend of the Blue Eyes White Dragon, guys? Oh, please. This set was actual dumpster fodder. The whole damn thing was nothing but a bunch of vanillas. It made the game look like it was going to be as boring as season one of the show. You would dare speak ill of Duelist Kingdom? Of course. Who can be expected to feel tension about anything when Yugi can just make up anything he pleases? Come on, guys, we're not talking about the show. You actually think the set is bad, Jin? Why? Must I really explain even something as basic as that? The entire monster lineup was invalidated by the starter decks released a mere three weeks later. It gave the impression that none of the monsters you invested your money into were going to be good enough to stick around. Jin, nobody was thinking that deeply about stuff like that in 2000 and goddamn 2. Besides, there was much more than monsters in this set. The staple spell cards released here had a lasting impact on the game so strong, they're used even to this day. I love Raigeki and Dark Hall. Cards that bring a level of joy to play rivaled only by how iconic they grew to be. You just like to blow stuff up. Do not. Monster Reborn, Potagreed, you really trying to say you don't enjoy slamming these down, Jin? Uh. Besides, you can't diss Legend of Blue Eyes. It laid the foundation of everything that came after. It was all built upon... Huh, who joined? Yo, Kanji Tatsumi, in the building. What's going on in here, guys? I think I remember this guy from somewhere. We are ranking all of the core Yu-Gi-Oh! booster sets from the DM era. We just started and we're talking about Legend of Blue Eyes. Oh, hell yeah! Legend of Blue Eyes was the shit! Skull Redbird was absolutely phenomenal! Uh, Kanji, was it? You used to play Yu-Gi-Oh? Not just used to. Been a competitive player since day one. Ever since I first saw the anime as a kid, I knew I had to get in there and tear that shit up. Huh. Well, you can hang out. We'll be interesting. None of us really have that competitive viewpoint to look at these sets from. Ha! Speak for yourself, brother. Jin, shut up. You didn't even know people played this game off the playground until you went to a locals with your 200-card deck of your favorite cards, surprised Archfiend Soldier wasn't on the ban list, and promptly got your ass kicked by Dino Rabbit. What? Wait, truly? How do you know that? Uh, because I'm the one who drove your ass there. And back. Duh. So we're putting Legend of Blue Eyes in S tier, right? Not a chance! I admit, the spells were good, but you actually played the game with the monsters, and it was flat out boring. Hey, you can't diss Legend of Blue Eyes, it was the foundation of yeah, all that. Yeah, yeah. We've been through this already, can we just put it in A and be done with it? This is acceptable. Hmm, fine. Even though I know for a fact I won't ever catch any of you playing this format for the fun of it. Alright, next we got Metal Raiders, what are we thinking? Oh yeah, man. Three words. Magician of Faith. Absolutely groundbreaking set. Fundamentally changed how the game was played. Really allowed players to start getting a feel for experimenting with the sort of tactics and strategy that the game would become known for in these earlier years. Hmm. That's how you know he's a sweat. Mentioning Magician of Faith before Mirror Force. Let me guess. You don't like this set either, huh, Jin? Don't be so cold, brother. Besides, this set was okay. Change of Heart was the standout. Like he said, this set actually brought some strategy into the game. <sighs> Waiting for your opponent to summon a Blue Eyes just to take it for your own ends was priceless. I still can't believe how often that shit was glued to your hand. I swear, you must have been goddamn cheating. Well, whatever. What do you think, Saya? I love Heavy Storm. The look on my opponent's faces after I take all manner of potential counterplay to my inevitable onslaught from them is something I will treasure forevermore. Again, you just like to blow shit up. 
Let's not forget Solemn Judgment 2. Absolute best trap to side and going first even today. Set also introduced clown control, baby. Mad fun to play back in the day. I'm not surprised. You seem to be a rather crass clown yourself. What was that asshole? Oh, hell nah. Get on dueling book right now. We're gonna throw down. Could you guys stop acting like idiots for one moment? Where are we gonna put this set? I'm thinking A, changed how the game was played some, introduced some mainstay cards while it was at it. Pretty damn good set. Perhaps, but above or below Legend of Blue Eyes is the question. Above. Below. Well, it seems we're at an impasse. Why am I not surprised? Why don't you decide, Saya? Above or below LOB? Well, Metal Raiders may have had Heavy Storm, but LOB had Dark Hole and Regeki, so below. Oh, come on! Dark Hole is just Regeki, but worse. Imagine getting power crept by something that came out in the exact same set. The standard that was set by card design in LOB was ridiculous. Hey, relax, man. Right, what about Spell Ruler? Hey, hey! I think you mean Magic Ruler, because that's exactly what this set was at the time. Crazy exciting! Lots of powerful spells added to the mix. We're talking Delinquent Duo, we're talking Forceful Sentry, we're talking Confiscation. Keeping cards in the hand was suddenly even riskier than throwing them out. Sure, but was that healthy for the game? Oh, hell no, man, but it was mad fun. I must disagree. This indirect manner of removing your opponent's resources before they even began to attempt to utilize them in a proactive way simply wasn't the same as simply destroying them. Well, ripping cards out of the hand wasn't the only way of getting rid of stuff that was becoming more common. Changing control of monsters was, too. I gotta admit, even I've really enjoyed Snatch stealing a monster or two in my time. Funny, Ragna the Blood Edge. That seems to remind me of how you used to snatch steel from that Chinese restaurant Whoa! in Oregon. Whoa! <laughs> hey, what, uh... What do you think about Spell Ruler Jin? You've been awfully quiet. Well, like he said, this was an era of having cards ripped from your hand before being able to use them to create board presence, which is appropriate, as the very presence of this set bored me. Mystical Space Typhoon and Giant Trinade are famous for being good spell and trap removal, but all I see when I look at them are cards that weren't lucky enough to be Heavy Storm. It is almost as though the card designers were taking steps backwards. Hey, relax, man. Sides, mass destruction isn't always better. A foolish statement. No, really. Haven't you guys ever known what it was like to premature burial something? Trunade that shit to your hand, then bring something else back with it to push for game? Well, to be fair, premature burial wasn't out yet. So what? You gotta take what the set's cards were able to do in the future into consideration when you rank them. If we're taking future cards into consideration as well, then Harpy's Feather Duster makes some of this set's good cards even more obsolete. Oh, I love Harpy's Feather Duster. The look on my opponent's faces, even in the current format, when I gracefully sweep away the entirety of their yeah, back Yeah, yes, Saya, we get it. Besides, this set had good monsters, too. Gave us the recruiters, too. Hell yeah! Changed the idea of what a good monster even was. All of a sudden, you couldn't just run something over with higher attack points and be rid of the problem. That's true. Mystic Tomato was my favorite. Same. Same. Wait, really? I was all about that giant rat. So are you saying it's as good as these two? Hell yeah, I am! That's beyond moronic. Well, what's your criteria? Are we rating them based on how good the cards were, or how good they were for the game and the player base? The scales of judgment even out on both sides. We must take all into consideration when making our decision. Oh, screw it. I'm just putting it in A2. Good spells, good monsters, and changed how players approach the game. Can't put it anywhere else? Hell, I'll even put it at the top of A. It would seem that the A stands for ass in our tier list. Oh, screw off, Jin. Are there any DM era sets you do like? Of course. The next one, actually. Pharaoh's Servant was a spectacular set. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Your favorite card is... Imperial Order. Naturally. Ha! You enjoy playing with a Saki card like I.O. Bet you think Max C should be legal, too. Don't insult me. I'm not stupid. Okay, so Jin likes I.O. Anything else in this set you like? Personally, I adore Gravity Bind. That struggling look of agony on the faces of players equipped with monsters that cannot use is tantalizing. Well, how about that, Say? I actually agree. There was also Jinzo, one of my all-time favorite monsters. I think all in all, this set brought some much-needed order to the game. Yeah, no pun intended, I'm sure. Well, what do you think, Kanji? Well, Set introduced some pretty great trap cards, really fleshed out the card type to be something to fear, but, uh, 
I don't know, it just didn't hit for me like the first three did. Oh, but it had more than trap cards. Aside from Jinzo, there was also Thousand Eyes Restrict, the first good fusion. Nay, the first good extra deck monster in the game ever. Halting the attacks of all other than himself and equalizing the game state by taking the attack points of the threat and making them his own. Don't tell me that's not good enough for you. No one played him at the time, though. It wasn't until Metamorphosis came around that he began I'm to sorry, be... I'm sorry, but what was it you said earlier? That what the cards can do in the future must be taken into consideration when ranking the set. Ha! Don't tell me you're a hypocrite for spell ruler. Uh, okay, fair point. You got me, I guess. What do you think, brother? Yes, Ragna the Blood Edge. You have hardly given your own thoughts on Pharaoh's servant. What say you? Oh, well, I gotta be honest. I was more into Digimon for a couple sets worth of time here, so I didn't open too many of these packs. Jin flipping I.O. every damn duel might have had something to do with that. Still, I gotta respect the history, and both you two seem to really like it, so I guess I can give it the first S. Damn, seeing Pharaoh's servant above everything that came before it just feels wrong. The words of someone who never draws outs to floodgates. H hey, that's got nothing to do with it! So, uh... Damn, what even came next? What, are you kidding? You sure you're even qualified to be making a list like this? It was Labyrinth of Nightmare, dude. First set of 2003. I love Torrential Tribute. The look on my opponent's faces when they summoned what they believed would be yeah, their yeah. winning... Yeah, yeah, favorite trap card. But honestly, was there anything else in this set? Card of safe return, man. What, are you kidding? Anything else? Uh, yeah, yeah. Kaiku the Ghost Destroyer. And, uh, Magic Cylinder. It seems to me as though you're stretching. Think about the several game warping cards and all the sets that came before. You're saying after all those, this was a good set? Jin, you didn't even like most of those sets. Please, brother. I'm using his own logic against him. You are aware whispering does not in a Discord call, yes? Uh, well, okay. I guess it was the first set with as few game-changing cards as it had. Thankfully, you see reason. Brother, put that garbage in D, quickly. Wait, what? Absolutely not. I shan't sit idle whilst you put the set which gave us the godsend torrential tribute into D tier. Brother, silence this woman. Well, I guess I can say it was the least impactful set so far, but that doesn't make it bad. I know one good card can't make a set, but Card of Safe Return and Kaiku were in here too. Along with some decent cards for some beatdown strategies like Gemini Elf, United We Stand, and Mage Power. I can't realistically put it in D, but I think C is a fair spot. This is all hearsay, yeah? Looking back on things without having been there to experience them yourself? Shut up, asshole. You barged in on our tier list. We're moving on to Legacy of Darkness. Okay, so, uh, do any of you actually like Yadalak? No. no. Okay, just making sure. I'll tell you what I did like, though. And that was Exiled Force. The artwork paired with the effect was badass. Bunch of dudes going to their deaths just to bring their enemy with them. That shit was sick. Oh, you actually recall this set, Ragnar the Blood Edge? Yeah, I jumped back into the game as soon as a friend of school showed me Fiber Jar. That was some crazy ass shit. I had to come back and see what was going on. I admit as a child, I thought flipping Fiber Jar just reset the game. Life points, banished cards and all. Haha, <laughs> yeah, that sort of shit was to be expected before problem solving card text. Sides, you seen how much text was on the original printing of Fiber Jar? And how small that shit was? Reminds me of Relinquished. There was a bunch of other cool cards we got here too. Bottomless Trap Hole, Asura Priest, Hell, even Royal Oppression. So what you guys think? A tier? Yeah? To be honest, I found this set to be rather... mid. What, seriously? There were some good cards, yes. But can we say these cards truly changed the game like the others of A tier? I think not. I can kind of understand what she means. While I did enjoy what came from Air Knight Parshath and Injection Fairy Lily, could you honestly compare them to IO and think them on the same level? Damn it, Jin, that's because you compare everything to IO! Hey, relax, man. I think a solid B tier's fair, mark of a good solid set. We didn't even talk about Rhoda. Cease this foolishness. As this set brought you back into the game, you are letting your nostalgia blind you. Ragna the Blood Edge. Furthermore, there were countless identical search cards printed after. W but Rhoda was the first of its kind! It's iconic! Really? It's fine, man. Let's just move on. Ugh, fine. Pharaoh Nick Guardian. Wang Hu is damn cool. What? Seriously, Jin? Wang Hu? 
That's the first card you mentioned? Well, I'm sure as hell not talking about effing Shape Snatch. Goodness. Ragna the Blood Edge. That reminds me of the time you Shape Snatched food from that Chinese restaurant in Hey, Orient. uh, I was just saying there's, uh, tons of solid cards in Pharaoh Nick Guardian. Uh, Ring of Destruction, for example. And Regeki Break, too. This is about when you started to see removal cards get more versatile. Able to take out monsters or back row. Oh, yeah, I remember rolling up to locals with Pac-Man a couple times. Crazy to think that shit ever worked like it did. What? Pac-Man? The hell's that? Oh, you never heard of it? Was an acronym that stood for Play All Calls, Mummies, and Dices, which, as the name implies, was all about getting Giant Axe Mummy out onto the field with Call of the Haunted and Call of the Mummy, coupled with that spicy dice jar tech. You must be joking, right? Oh, 100%. It stood for something involving camels or something. I never played that shit. The hell? Well, whatever. Saya, anything you like from this set? I personally loved Yomi Ship. Okay, what the actual hell? Yomi Ship? Wang Hu? I don't even know what effing Pac-Man is! Hello, guys! This set had Book of Moon, Terraforming, Gravekeeper's Spies. Is no one gonna bring up any of that? Hey, don't lump THE King Tiger Wang Hu in with that other stuff. Uh, well... Where do you guys want to put it? C tier. C tier. Well, no other words for it. That was just weird. Nothing to do but keep going, I suppose. All right, Magician's Force. I have mixed feelings about this one. Union monsters suck. True. Spell Canceler, on the other hand, is amazing. Untrue. Yo, why do you always bring up the most niche-ass cards first? Says the guy whose first comment about Pharaoh Nick Guardian was about effing Pac-Man. Yo, but what about Breaker the Magical Warrior? Absolute killer card. Built-in back row removal. Probably the best combination of type and attribute at the time, being warrior and dark, and all on a body with a solid-ass stat line. I'm sorry I zoned out for a minute there. What were you saying about Breaker's body having a solid ass? Wha what The hell, that ain't what I said at all! You need to get your ears checked, old man. I've never thought about Breaker's ass in my life. Your reaction provides a rather persuasive argument as to the contrary. Honestly, I never thought Breaker was that great of a card. You gotta be shitting me. You're gonna need to give us an explanation for that one, Jin. Naturally. Cards that had built in removal at this time, such as Exiled Force, and later down the line with Chaos Sorcerer, Black Luster Soldier, and Chaos Emperor Dragon, all had the boon of priority existing as a mechanic during their heyday meaning they could be triggered to do what they need to do with very little opportunity for the opponent to stop them. Since Breaker needed to put a counter on itself first, it could be trap hold or bottom list before getting a chance to do what you're playing it to do. A fair point indeed. I'm pleasantly surprised you were able to string together a somewhat compelling argument. Ah, uh, but you're missing the point, you bozo. If the opponent is using a resource to out the breaker, then it's already done its job of getting rid of something. Besides, with most monsters running around being smaller ones like Sangon and the recruiters, Bottomless wasn't even something played all that much during this set's time. And yet, what was played? Remember that this set gave degenerate burn decks a consistent win condition in wave motion cannon? I think Breaker's lack of priority is quite literally a fatal flaw when it would so often not be able to destroy what it needs to. That's the sort of thing that decides the outcome of duels. Yeah, I knew we'd get around to this eventually. The burn strats that came out of this set were a real pain in the ass. Not even just at the time either. One of my own personal first experiences playing a tournament player involved that goddamn mass driver and a shit ton of effing frogs. You never were a fortunate one, were you? You can't just dock the set for the burn strats because you don't like them. They gave the players options, man, options. Showed you can play the game in a variety of unique, different ways. Not everyone likes to play the same way. And you gotta admit, helping appeal to a wider range of playstyles draws in more players, which is always good for the game. I would disagree, and FYI, it's my list, and I can dock the sets for whatever I goddamn want. I'm putting it in B, and I think that's being generous. Hold a moment, Ragnar the Blood Edge. Do recall this set had Kaiser Colosseum, a simply wonderful card which provided stall strategies a unique way to halt the advances of more aggressive aggro decks. Surely you can find it in your heart to be a tad more generous. Yeah, I changed my mind. This shit's going straight to C. What? You're kidding! But what about magical scientists, brother? F*** this set. Damn, Dark Crisis already? We're really breezing through this! 
Really? This has felt like a damn eternity for me. I believe I shall start us off by saying Sakuritsu Armor was a lovely card. Again, it's just Mirror Force, but worse. Mirror Force was limited at the time. Who gives a shit? That was just how Konami got people to buy their new inferior cards. You don't like the ban list, Jin? I love the ban list, but that doesn't mean I'm gonna abide by it. The hell are you smoking? That was not all. DD Warrior Lady was great, too. Agreed. Another solid removal option searchable by Rhoda. The only removal option on my mind right now is the option to remove you from this damn call. This is literally just Labyrinth of Nightmare all over again. A criminally small number of okay cards meant to scam you into digging through the rest of the set's garbage for. But Jin, this set had skill drain. Thank you for proving my point for me. Immediate D tier. With how you harp on about IO, Jin, I'd have thought you'd love skill drain. Absolutely not, brother. Making comparisons like that are why you're a damn criminal. I'd like to know what the difference is in your eyes. Ha. If you can't see it, I'm not going to explain it to you. That is what he says when he has no logical reason. Shut up. You just love skill drain because you can't deal with players having skill. You need to take it away to stand a chance. Whoa, whoa, let's all just calm down. This set had more than a few great cards. Vampire Lord was a great secret rare. Turned Pyramid Turtle into a pretty deadly floater. Your vampire fetish is showing Mr. Ragnar the Blood Edge. Uh, uh, Tsukuyomi! One of the best and most iconic spirit monsters ever printed. Tsukuyomi was pretty sick. Flipping Thousand Eyes face down, then flipping it right back up again to steal something else was the best. To be honest, I never liked Tsukuyomi that much. Most claimed its greatest strength was returning to the hand to dodge removal and gain the ability to be used again. But I merely saw it incapable of committing itself to the board. The hell? If it stuck around, that'd kind of defeat the whole point, wouldn't it? It's fine. She's just salty because of how Rachel cock-blocked her with the Tsukuyomi unit back home. Wait, what? Silence. Ragna the Blood Edge. Lest you soon find yourself in a rather dark crisis of your own. That definitely didn't come out sounding as threatening as you intended it to. It's fine. I'll just put it at the top of B, though personally I could be convinced to put it in A. The real dark crisis is this list. Invasion of Chaos. S. D. Really, Jin? As the wielder of the power of order, I'm obligated to hate chaos. But actually, yeah, the set was pretty sick. Okay, thank you. Ancient Sanctuary. Oh, come on. Can we get this one over with just as fast? Everyone knows this set is terrible, man! I can count how many decent cards this set had on one hand and still have fingers to spare. Enemy controller, Zaborg, and I guess Night Assailant. Ha! Spoken like an amateur. You clearly have never known the sensation of paying 7,000 for Wall of Revealing Light and being left with virtually impenetrable defenses. You know, I think I'm beginning to understand why you like I owe so much. You need it so your trash-ass strats can't be immediately outed. What was that? Don't come after me just because I was able to find success with cards you simply wrote off without a second thought. Okay, okay, calm down. Saya, you got anything to say about ancient prophecy? Just that if you put it above torrential tribute, I will end you. Well then, since I don't want to be ended, I'll put it a tier below Labyrinth of Nightmare. Very small number of good cards and didn't change or add any new noteworthy strategies to the game unless you count Zaborg introducing monarchs despite ending up as one of the worst ones. Next is Soul of the Duelist. Blah, the rest are just these 60 card sets, right? Absolutely worthless. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, this set wasn't really all that hot. Still had some cool cards, though. Mystic Swordsman Level 2 was a solid tech choice at the time, and Mobius was an absolute house. For sure. Hammershot was a decent alternative for when Smashing Ground got hit on the ban list a while down the line. What do you think, Saya? I am aware that this is not a popular opinion, but I truly enjoyed the level monsters. Oh, uh, really? Indeed. My favorites were the Dark Mimics. Oh yeah, I totally forgot about those. Not a bad source of draw power. Dekoichi style, baby. And they had that dark synergy for chaos strats. Actually, I simply thought they were cute. That's a certified WTF moment. The set was definitely better upon closer inspection than at first glance. Mass Dragon was a good addition to the recruiter line and had some real solid synergy with the armed dragons, being able to pull out level 3 from deck, which could then easily tag into 5 when the opponent passed. Oh brother, please don't tell me you're about to put this set anywhere higher than C. I'm definitely leaning that way. Why, you don't like any cards from this set, Jin? Well, there was one that I always liked. 
Neo Aqua Maydor. Now that is a true WTF move. Oh, please. 3,000 defense for a single tribute set was phenomenal. Explain how exactly you intend to get rid of that. Neg hard with Regeki break. Waste your exiled force or warrior lady. Assuming you can even get to them. Walling up behind a Neo was a nigh insurmountable defensive strategy. <laughs> yeah, until you actually had to summon shit to push for game, only to get blown out by Torrential. Oh, as I recall, that actually happened once or twice. Such fond memories. Shut up! Well, I'm glad we talked this one out because I was going to put it in C initially, but now I think it deserves a B. What do y'all think? Hell no! The dark mimics are cute, yes, but functionally I cannot grade this set that high based on that. Wait, really? I thought we were leaning higher than this. What do you think, Kanji? What? Oh, uh, sorry, I zoned out. Kind of still in shock that she thinks the dark mimics are cute. Shit's kind of freaky, man. Your crude eye lacks appreciation for finer things. Well, okay, see it is then, I guess. You cool with me putting this above your precious torrential tribute, Saya? For my dark mimics, I will allow it. Okay, uh, oh shit, here we go. All right, Rise of Destiny. I okay, yeah, it was as pretty high as But there were some OP cards, too. Well, could make the Koi Chi. Stop, 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 one at a time. Jeez, uh, Jin, you first. Rise of Destiny, go. Trash of the absolute highest tier. Not even that bitch Noel could make the dumpster smell as rancid as this shit does. Good God, this is terrible. I remember as a young child, stores overflowed with overstock of this set. No matter how many I opened, I never seemed to come across anything of worth. The time it took for this set to be replaced seemed eternal, and that is coming from I, one who has no time to begin with. Okay, yeah, it was pretty awful, but there were some okay cards too. Dekoichi, Thestalos, even Divine Wrath was a pretty cool tech choice. And machine duplication became a pretty big deal later down the line. Yeah, no, sorry, Kanji, you're falling on deaf ears this time, I gotta say. I thought this set was pretty awful, too. Can you believe how thoroughly they botched what could have been an amazing card like the creator? Why was it unable to be special, summoned from the graveyard? This was the chase secret rare of the set, and it's like they were intentionally trying to make it terrible. Oh, come on, man. Harpies became a playable deck with the addition of Hunting Ground, too. Sorry, but I gotta side with Jin on this one. To this day, I still feel sick when I see a pack of this set, when the best card in it is basically a glorified Dark Mimic. You know you have problems. You would dare compare the lovely Dark Mimic to that hideous-ass train? Well, I guess that's fair. Honestly, I was playing Devil's Advocate. I didn't really like the set, either. I'm cool putting it the worst of the era. Right. Okay. And that leaves us with the last set we'll be ranking today, Flaming Eternity. Was the last set of the Dual Monsters era, and the first set to feature a monster on front of the packs instead of Yugi, which was pretty cool if you ask me. That was cool, but this set on the other hand was painfully mid. Sacred Phoenix was a pretty meh strategy, and Wing Blast, my personal favorite card in the set, required you to hard neg for it to work. Yeah, that sort of seemed like a theme around this time, huh? Lightning Vortex, one of the other better cards in the set, also had that discard cost. Oh, I love Lightning Vortex. Shut up! It's just a worse Raigeki! Yeah, Grand Marg was a pretty average monarch, too. At least it could pop both monsters and back row. But hey, on the other hand, Rescue Cat, baby! Contender for my favorite card of all time, hell yeah! Except it didn't do anything until Synchros came out. Ah, shut up. Who didn't love Rescue Cat from day one? I mean, just look at it. It's so freaking cute. Do you truly think so? I must say, I see not the appeal. Yeah, well, coming from a bitch who thinks Dark Mimic is cute, I guess I shouldn't be surprised. But still, what the hell? I gotta say, Arm Samurai Ben K was a real fun rogue strategy too. Just loading that guy up with a shit ton of equips and going to town felt super satisfying. Gonna be honest guys, it's mid, sure, but it's at the top of mid. Any objections? Nah, we're cool. None worth voicing. No, but only because it has Lightning Vortex. Well, all right then, there we go. Came out a real nice even spread. Feeling pretty happy with that. What about y'all? Oh, for sure, man. Couple things I'd change personally. But hey, this was fun. Hit me up if you'll ever do GX, yeah? I'm gonna bounce. Later. Good God, this was painful. I forgot how much garbage there was to sift through in the first era. Yeah, you were always a synchro sort of guy, huh? Of course. My deck would feel void of purpose without Bryonic and Trishula. I haven't a clue how the early players stuck with the game. I too shall take my leave for the evening. My curfew is nigh. Good day to you both. Yeah, later, Saya. See ya. 
there, Jin. How are you? Oh, hey, Tsubaki. What's up? I just finished teaching Noel how to play Yu-Gi-Oh. Wait, isn't that Ragna the Blood Edge? What were you two doing in here? Oh, we just finished ranking all the core sets from the Duel Monsters era. Really? Hey, let me see. Wait, what is my precious ancient sanctuary doing in D-tier? Oh, son of a...